Then Peter came to himself, verse 11, and said, Now I know without a doubt that the Lord had, the Lord has sent his angel and rescued me from Herod's clutches and from everything the Jewish people were hoping would happen. But this is what I want you to see. Now when this had dawned on him, he went to the house of Mary, the mother of John, also called Mark, where many people had gathered and were praying. Now this is the group that was praying for Peter when Peter was in prison. They're praying to God to set Peter free. Y'all got the picture? Praying for God. God, set Peter free. Set Peter free. So Peter shows up, and Peter knocked at the outer entrance. And a servant named Rhoda came to answer the door. And when she recognized Peter's voice, she was so overwhelmed, she ran back without opening it and exclaimed, Peter is at the door. They praying for Peter. Peter gets set free. Peter shows up at the house, knocks on the door. She hears Peter's voice. She's so excited, she don't even open the door. She runs back in and tells everybody who's praying, hey, God has answered our prayer and Peter is standing outside. Ain't that a wonderful thing? Yes. Just imagine if the church would go to praying and the stuff start knocking at the door. But you know what happens when stuff start knocking at the door because the church has been praying? The church got to open the door. Don't leave it standing outside. You know, that would have been akin to, 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 to the young lady coming to tell her sister, to, you know, knocking, trying to tell her, I found a car, and, and she don't open the door to get the message. Right. When the message comes, you got to open up the door to hear the message. Yes, yes. God opens gates. Mm -hmm. We got to open the door. Right. 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 <laughs> Moving right along. So she goes and she tells this praying group of intercessors, Peter is at the door. And what is their response? You are out of your mind. They just pray. They're praying for God to set for, for God to set Peter free. This is funny. I mean, there's a lot of humor in the Bible. That's how I know he's real. <laughs> They're praying. For God to set Peter free, God sets Peter free, the girl goes to tell him, Peter at the door, Peter's free, and they say, you out of your mind. <laughs> so my question would be, why are you praying for God to move if you don't believe he's going to do it? Good question. Good, excellent question. Yes. I often have people come up and say, Pastor, would you pray for me? What am I praying about? X, Y, and Z. Well, do you believe that God is going to do it? Well, I'm not sure, but would you pray for me? No. Somebody said, well, that's not very passionate. No, the Bible says, when you pray, believe. There's no need for no one praying if you don't believe. Hello. I said, pray and receive, doubt, and do without. Pray without. Watch out. <laughs> He's alive. Said, so you done lost your mind. When she kept insisting that it was so, they said, well, it must be his angel. Now, here's the thing that I want you to see, because remember, the Pharisees believed that there were angels and spirits, right? This group of praying believers believed that there were angels and spirits. But the thing is, they believe that when someone dies, it is possible. You ever have someone that's really, 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 really close to you pass away? And then you're, you're somewhere and you say, you know, I can feel their presence. Amen. Amen. Yes. I, I, I know they're I know they with me. I remember that as a, as a little boy when my mom passed away. You know, I would be facing that. I said, man, I feel my mom's presence. Mm -hmm. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Talking about. Mm -hmm. But that's not resurrection. That's right. But that's what they believed. 
that when people transition, their presence can be here. It might even be their guardian angel. Y'all heard of guardian angels. It might be his spirit. You remember Jesus resurrected from the dead and they couldn't believe it was him. What did he say? He said, handle me and see. Touch me. It's me. It's me. Flesh and spirit doesn't have flesh and bone. Bone. Not blood. Flesh and bone. As you see, I have. The Jesus didn't have any blood after he resurrected. Y'all know that. He didn't have any blood. Remember, he was on the cross. Took the spear. And they shoved it in his side. And forthwith came blood and water. His blood was shed for the remission of sin. So when he resurrected from the dead, he still had a body and bone. But he didn't have blood. He was a new kind of man. Does this make sense? Paul's out preaching this stuff. Jesus, this same Jesus that you crucified, not a different one, this same Jesus that you crucified, God has made both Lord and Christ. Jesus is not in the tomb. Amen. He's not here. He's resurrected. Now what are they talking about resurrected? Because Jesus wasn't the first man that ever came out of a tomb. Oh, can we talk this morning? I know everybody's preparing this for dinner. But I know y'all got your oven set. The timer will go off and the food won't burn. So we're going to talk a little bit, okay? Resurrection. What are they talking about? The resurrection. Jesus was not the first man to come out of the tomb. Can anybody tell me who was the first man to ever come out of a tomb? After dying. Lazarus. But well, Lazarus died again. Yes. Right. Lazarus wasn't the first person to be brought back from the dead. Can anybody tell me who the first man or first person was to come back from the dead? Y'all remember the prophet Elisha? He was out and he had stayed with this little widow woman. She had a son and the boy died and Elisha said, where is he at? He said, well, he's upstairs on the bed. He said, okay, I can, I can handle this. So Elisha Went up there, stretched his body over the boy, and the boy came back to life. But that's not resurrection. Jesus was in town ministering one day, and a funeral was going by. Jesus stopped the funeral, walked over, and said to the little girl, Tabitha, arise. And the girl got up. So there were other people who had come back from the dead, but that's not resurrection. Went to the tomb of Lazarus. We all know this story. This is the one that 99.9% .9 of the churches are hearing this morning. Lazarus. Jesus stood before the tomb. Lazarus has been dead how long? Four days. What did they say? Lord, he's stinking. Yeah. Jesus said, that's all right. Roll away the stone. Which I always find interesting when I read that story. Jesus said, I'm going to do my part. But y'all roll away the stone. That's right. God will do some amazing miracles for us. If we do our part. If we, oh, Lord. There you go. I'm going to start preaching right here. I don't even, I don't even have to finish my sentences. But he will. God will do amazing things in our lives if we do our part. The problem is, we don't want to do our part, and then we start questioning God. And then when people show up and start telling you what God did for them, then they look at them like they crazy. Like they out of their mind. <laughs> you out of your mind. God ain't you that. Oh, yes, he did. Oh, yes, he will. 
will. He's alive. God will do anything we ask him to do if we'll work the word. If we don't work the word, the word won't work. It doesn't matter. Jesus stands before the tomb. He said, roll away the stone. But he said something interesting before. Do you believe that your brother is going to rise again? And what was the response? Yes, yes Lord, I believe he's going to rise again in the resurrection, which is at the last day. So they did believe in resurrection. But they believed in resurrection as an event that was going to take place way down the future. Like some Christians I know. They believe in resurrection. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with the shout, with the voice of the archangel. And the trumpet God is going to sound. And the dead in Christ is going to rise first. And then we which are alive and remain will be caught up to meet the Lord in the air. And there shall we ever be with the Lord. So yes, I believe in the resurrection. I believe that when I die, if I die, before Jesus returns, that my body will be raised from the dead. Yes, I believe in the resurrection. Amen. Now, if I happen to be among those who live to see the Lord return, then I'm going to be changed. That's right. I won't even taste death. My physical body will undergo a miraculous change. Some folk don't believe that. Huh? Huh? You'd be amazed at what some Christians don't believe. You'd be amazed. Oh, they may give mental assent that that's what the Bible says, but that's not believing. That's mentally agreeing that that's what the Bible says. Do I need to say that again? I got some looks like what? You can mentally agree that that is written in the Bible and not believe. Don't believe. Yeah, that's true. Jesus said, now let me, Mary, Martha, let me help y'all out with something. I am the resurrection. Did you ever wonder why he said that? They thought the resurrection was an event. And he said he was the resurrection. The resurrection is not an event. The resurrection is a person. And Jesus is the resurrection. Now somebody just said, I'm not pastor. False doctrine, heresy. Go to Romans. And let me show you what really happened in the resurrection. Now I want you to go to Romans chapter 5. Then we'll hold the holy place there. Romans chapter 5. Jesus said, I am the resurrection. You remember after Jesus rose, sitting on the bank with the disciples? And they was out fishing. They couldn't catch nothing. Jesus said, go on catch them. Catch them on the other side of the boat. Then they cast them on the other side of the boat. They caught all this stuff. Just imagine if you were somewhere and you were trying to get something done and you couldn't do it. And then Jesus said, the reason you can't catch nothing is because you're doing it the wrong way. <laughs> you know what they probably thought? Now, this is them, not us. But you know what they probably thought? What do you mean? On the other side of the boat, Jesus, we are always casting on this side. Uh -oh. Jesus said, no, no, no. I know that's the side you always cast on. But if you notice, you ain't catching nothing. So if you want to catch something, throw it on the other side. In other words, do it a little bit. <laughs> 